So I, I, we went to this symposium in Maastricht the first time all the people working in cultured meat got together. Um, and I wasn't going to talk about it, and someone said, like, didn't you go to that conference? Didn't you talk about that? And so I, I literally threw these slides together, like, in the back of the room over there. So apologies if it's not the most sort of fluid presentation. Um, this is the symposium we went to. It, it was really cool. Uh, probably there were 100 people there. It was literally all the scientists working on tissue engineering vis-a-vis -vis growing meat that people can eat, um, which is a pretty new field, um, but pretty exciting. So, so what is it? This is, this is what most of you probably who have heard about it know about. So in 2013, uh, one of the leading scientists in the field, Dr. Mark Post, um, grew a full burger, and it was eaten live on British television by two food critics. Um, Sergey Brin backed this. It cost uh, 250,000 euro uh, to, <laughs> to make this. And the food critics, they said it was recognizably beef. And that was like as far as they went in their praise. Um, they <laughs> Which is not bad. Uh, they thought it was dry and, and, and not particularly delicious, but one of them actually said it's not the worst uh, burger they've had, so not bad. And yeah, this is her actually <laughs> consuming it. Um, and so first, first before I tell you about it, why, why would anyone want to do this, right? Like why would anyone want to grow meat in a, a tube and then have people eat it? That's kind of weird, right? Um, there's a few reasons. One, we're having a lot of trouble feeding the world right now, right? And the demand for meat is growing very rapidly. The, the UN estimates that it's going to grow by 73% uh, in, in, by 2050. And we're not doing a good job of feeding those people now. Um, two, animal welfare. Um, the way we treat the animals that we use for livestock um, are, is awful. And then there's the additional fact that we slaughter them, which some people think is, is pretty shitty behavior. Um, there's nutrition. It's really hard to control uh, the, be the, the, the beef if you're growing it in a field somewhere and can't supervise it all the time. And so it's not necessarily the healthiest meat for us, and if we grow it in a lab, it should be healthier. Uh, the environmental impact. So the contributions from livestock is greater than the contribution to global warming of all of the vehicles that humans drive across the, across the earth and is also ri rising pretty, pretty quick. So that's a huge one. And then it could be delicious, right? You could, uh, if you're growing it in the lab, you could have like beef tuna, or you know, chicken beef, like whatever you want, you could you could play with it, you can customize it. Tim could do cool things with it, um, and so it could be pretty delicious. Um, just to, to drive home the environmental impact, uh, this is like what a factory farm looks like. This is what we've we've come to, right, in our attempt to like feed the world uh, all the meat that they want. This is this is kind of insane um, for for many reasons. And if you need evidence uh, that it's it's bad, uh, Mr. Macho Man himself, uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger who once told someone that they punched like a vegetarian, uh, recently came out and, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, that's too distracting. I'm gonna get, <laughs> it's better, still bad. Okay, we'll have to go with that. He recently came out two days ago and encouraged people to go with a vegetarian diet, purely because of global warming concerns. And so like, if this guy is coming around on vegetarianism, it's a real deal. This is a really fascinating quote from Winston Churchill in a 1931 essay called 50 Years Hence, which is an amazing essay. I encourage everyone to read it. Uh, he said, we shall escape the absurdity of growing a whole chicken in order to eat the breast or wing by growing these parts separately under a suitable medium. So really amazing. In 1931, Winston Churchill was predicting, uh, predicting lab-grown meat. Um, and so with this, I'm just going to go through a quick history of the field. So 31, Churchill had his amazing prediction. 1971 is the first time uh, muscle fibers were actually cultivated in vitro. 2001, NASA started investing and in looking to the space as a solution for feeding people in space. Uh, they were looking into lab-grown chicken. In 2002, the first cultured meat was eaten. It was cultured goldfish meat. Tasted like nothing, and it was a very tiny bit, but it happened. Uh, 2005, the f first peer-reviewed paper on cultured meat was published. In 2013, this was the year Mark Post uh, brought his 250,000 euro burger to the world. And 2015, I think, really starts the commercialization of this. Um, Brian went over a couple of companies in the space, Modern Meadow uh, and um, Memphis Meats. But there's a third one called Mosa Meats, which is founded by Dr. Post, um, who is now uh, walking away from academia to, s to sort of scale this up, because um, he thinks the technology is there. So now we're going to get into some science, because I know people love science. Um, this is a brief overview of the culturing process. So th it starts with taking a biopsy from a, from a living cow. They say they can do this pain painlessly. 
um, but they still do have to grab some meat from the cow. And then what they do is they, they isolate the muscle uh, cells, uh, specifically satellite cells, so muscle stem cells. Um, they then put those into a culture, they let them uh, uh, replicate and, and multiply, then they, they uh, induce them into forming myotubes, uh, and then they put those myotubes in a certain structure of medium, and those things for form muscle tissues. And then they assemble these muscle tissues together um, to make the actual meat. And it's a long process. Uh, we actually, when we were in Maastricht, had the great opportunity of touring Mark Post's lab. He gave us, an, like, a, a L and I, an individual tour. Um, and so I, I grabbed some pictures. So this is actually what uh, the end stage looks like. So these are all actual tissues you know, uh, here, muscle tissue, inside the cell culture. And it takes a very long time to get these. Uh, in case you're curious, this is how you take a photo like that. Uh, this is a technician in Mark Post's lab uh, working on this process. Uh, as you can see, this is like a time-consuming thing. And you have to produce a lot of it. Um, and so it's not very scalable, um, which brings us to the big challenges. Um, it's a really exciting time for the field because it's basically been proven that this, this, is, a, this is a thing. You can do it. Um, you can eat it. Um, but there are a lot of things that have not been figured out yet. Um, cost is one thing. So uh, the burger in 2013 cost 250,000 euro. Mark Post now says he can produce a burger for $11. So that's pretty pretty nice uh, drop. But that burger still uh, doesn't taste very good. It still doesn't have fat tissue. There's still a lot of problems. And uh, he has no idea how to scale that up. So he, he could do that in a lab over a long period of time with free like you know, uh, graduate students. They don't know how to get fat tissue in there. So right now, it's all protein. Uh, and which is which is cool because it's super healthy, but it doesn't for a meat eater. It just would not be very satisfying. It's not juicy. It doesn't taste like real meat. The, I mean, the texture is not very similar to real meat. And they don't know how to do that yet. So this is like an unanswered scientific question um, in terms of how do you actually uh, get these this fat tissue into the into the patty. They have no idea how to scale this. So right now, I showed you the process that uh, is currently how to do it. They have uh, ideas about how to do it in bioreactors. And Mark Post is starting with a uh, one liter bioreactor, which like fits on a desk uh, to do this at a slightly uh, faster pace. Um, but in, if for this to be industrial scale, they've got to do it in like a 50,000 uh, liter bioreactor, which has not been designed yet. And so that's like, that's like a big uh, question mark on the whole field is who's going to design these things? What do they need to look like um, for, it to, to, for it to happen at scale? And then societal acceptance is a big one, right? There's a lot of questions about this. A lot of people are like, I would totally try that. A lot of people are like, that's weird. Keep that away from me. Um, and so how the market will react to this is still an open question. Um, and then uh, second last slide, these are the sort of metrics for success. Um, and it was really interesting that to hear these. Right? So you've got to get the taste right, obviously. You've got to get the texture, the feel of it right. They've got to get the appearance right. So the, the idea is for this to replace uh, meat. And so for that to happen, it's not, a, it's not a product for vegans or vegetarians. It's a product for meat eaters. That's kind of like what, where they want to go. Um, so they've got to get these, th th these three things to the po uh, place where they're at least you know, uh, equivalent to current meat. Um, then they've got to get the nutritional value there. And then, of course, they've got to get the cost down. The cool thing is that once they figure these things out, uh, they can go so much farther, right? So, like, you can have this, like, personalized food that we were talking about. It's, it's conceivable that you have a box on your kitchen countertop uh, that, that, you know, cultures meat specifically for your nutritional profile, um, which is really exciting, it, you know, or your taste profile. Um, and so it's coming. It's super exciting. Uh, if you want to hear more about it, you can grab me afterwards. But that's cultured meat in brief. Thanks.